Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. One question I'm sometimes asked is how to composite wildlife images, specifically how to clip an animal out of one scene and put that animal in a different scene. That's what we're going to be covering today. I'm going to show you how to do it in Photoshop. Now, one suggestion, it's very difficult to clip out anything that is in a busy scene, meaning if this eagle that I'm showing you right now was in front of like a bunch of different branches and had other eagles in the background and stuff like that, it's more difficult to clip out. So don't expect miracles on those types of images. But if you have an image like this uh, that has a fairly even background, but what I don't like about it is, first of all, kind of the color. Also, you can see that there's a chain link fence. You can see it's a blurred out chain link fence behind the eagle. So I'd prefer to clip the eagle out of this uh, scene and drop that eagle into a different scene. Now, all I have uh, is this. It may look totally uh, incongruent compared to the eagle, but I'm going to show you how you can make it kind of fit and look like it belongs in this scene. So we're going to start with the eagle and we're going to clip the eagle out. There's a number of different ways you could do it. Uh, with the new tools in Photoshop, I found actually it's fairly easy. What you want to do is go to any of the selection tools. You hit the W key on your keyboard and you'll get one of three selection tools, either the object, quick, or magic wand tool. Most often you're going to want to either use the object selection tool and you can see there's a little spinning wheel up here at the moment it's not spinning but it's thinking and then what you do is when you hover over um, an object it will put this overlay on and that means it selected the eagle in this case. Usually I don't like to use that but you could try it out and see if it works uh, well for you. This may work if you have more than one object in the scene, meaning you have two eagles side by side and you only want to clip one of them out. Then use the object selection tool, hover over it, and click on it. And then you'll have a selection. You can see we have those marching ants. You probably see around the eagle now. I'm going to undo that. Hit Command or Control D to deselect. So I don't want to use the object selection tool for this eagle. What I do want to do is go up here to the top. Whenever you have any of those three selection tools active, up here you'll have a button, Select Subject. What I do is I go to this little drop-down and I let the cloud do the computing. That way, uh, Adobe's computers will be looking at the image and making the selection. And Adobe's computers are much more powerful than my computer, and often it will do a much better job. Now, of course, you need an active internet connection and you have to not care that your image is being sent up to Adobe and Adobe is going to have it on their computer while they're doing this um, selection. So I'm going to use the cloud and I'll click select subject. Now you can see we get that spinning wheel. It's thinking and eventually we'll get um, a selection around the object. Now, if you don't want to send it up to Adobe's uh, cloud or Adobe's computers, you can just use device and then your computer will do the selection. So I have the selection. Next, we need to refine it. You go to this button right here, select and mask. Now you have a different, you have different types of views you could utilize. Uh, right now I have this black view or the black on black view. Uh, often I found either that or overlay works best. You can see with overlay, it looks a little different. You can see that maybe the feathers don't look as good as the on black. So you try one or the other. One note, often if you're using on black, uh, the opacity, even though it's at 100, it will be showing it like this. So you're going to have to come in and just move this slider. It's just a bug that's been in Photoshop forever. So even though the opacity of on black's background is at 100%, it's going to show it like at 50%. So you're going to have to just move that to kick it into 100. Now for this specific image, I think the um, overlay view looks best because I could see the edges of the feathers. Next, what I do, even though this is a bird and it doesn't have hair, it does have feathers, click this Refine Hair button and you'll see that it takes a second. It kind of brought out some more of those feathers. 
The next thing I often do to refine it is I go down here to decontaminate colors and I just click this checkbox. And you can see it brought out the feathers even more. So it looks pretty good. Now at this point, you're either done, I think I'm done, or you may have to refine it a little more. Well, I found you go over into these sliders and you'll be there till forever and you'll often think that you're making it worse. What I suggest you do instead of jumping over to those sliders right away is go over here and get the second tool from the top. This is the refine edge brush and be in plus mode. And let's say get a smaller brush, use the left bracket key to make it smaller, right bracket key makes it bigger. And you have an area here that doesn't look right. Just kind of brush on it and then let go. And then you'll see it kind of fixes it. So you could come in and refine all these little edges with this refine edge brush overall go in here. And it looks pretty good, actually. So once you're satisfied, go back over to the right-hand side and change the output to a new layer. All right, and then click OK. Now you see we have our clipped out eagle. See, it's totally clipped out. And now we need to get that eagle and put it on this other tab of this background, which is totally like incongruent to what the eagle is, but we'll fix that. So let's get it over there. We're going to get the move tool, hit the V key on your keyboard for the move tool. It's the top tool over here on the left. Just click on the eagle, drag it up to that tab up there, and then drag it and drop it onto this scene here. Now, for some computers, particularly some Windows systems, for some reason, this click and drag method often won't work. If that is the case, what you need to do is use uh, Control A to select everything, Control C to copy it to the clipboard, and then go over to this tab and hit Control V and it will drop it here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move it towards the bottom and I need to resize it. So I'm gonna hit Command or Control T on my computer. I'll get these handles and I could resize it. I want the eagle to fit in this scene perfectly, just like that, and we'll click the checkbox. All right, it looks pretty bad still. So now what we need to do is we need to crop this so that it looks more, a little more natural. It's still not going to, going to be correct yet, but we need to crop it. So get the crop tool. The C key on your keyboard is the keyboard shortcut for the crop tool. It's right here. I want to keep it in a two to three ratio, except I need to flip the ratio. I don't want a vertical ratio. I want a horizontal ratio. So I'll click these um, opposite pointing arrows. Then what I'll do is I'll just drag the image. So we're like that. So that looks pretty good. And we'll click. And we don't need content aware. We're not adding any pixels or creating any pixels. We're just going to delete the cropped pixels and we'll click the check mark. All right, let's fit it to screen. Hit Command or Control Zero to do that. You could hit Command or Control Minus if it is a little too big. You don't like it that big on your screen. All right. It's okay, but it still doesn't look right, does it? Because that background shouldn't be as in focus as it is. Uh, so we need to blur that background. So go to this bottom layer. The bottom layer is the background layer. So go to that, click on that. Now we're going to go up to filter, down to blur, and then over to Gaussian blur. Now, if you have this uh, checkbox checked, you'll see the preview as you move this radius slider. Now you can see that that's blurred pretty good. I don't know how much you want it blurred. Maybe something more like that. All right, maybe a little like that. I don't know. But that doesn't look too bad. And we'll click OK. All right, now we still have the crop tool active. We'll go up to the move tool. That's what I like to do is to see it uh, together. So now we have our eagle on top of that background. Now, we could process it as we normally do. Typically, what I would do is put a stamp layer on top. You could do that or you could flatten the image. To flatten the image, you would go up to Layer and then down to Flatten Image, and then you'll get a single layer here. Uh, to put a stamp layer on top, you, there's a keyboard shortcut for that. On a PC, it's Shift, Alt, Control, E, on a Mac, it's Shift, Option, Command, E. When you do that, you now have a stamped layer. Now you could process this as you might normally process it. What I would do is I would go up to Filter and down to the Camera Raw Filter, which is right there. 
now uh, to process it here, what I would probably do is go to masking and I'll select the subject. Now it's selecting not the whole subject. It didn't get everything that I wanted to do. So I need to add to this mask and I'm going to add it with a brush and we'll come in here and do this. Now you may be wondering, well, I could have sent the eagle over. Um, I could have sent the eagle, the top layer, the eagle all by itself. Well, it would have just been the eagle and I wouldn't have been able to see the background. And then I wouldn't have been able to know if I was uh, processing like what I want to process properly as far as the entire image is concerned. So got to come in and just bear with me while I do this. So that's, I missed the shoulder a little bit, but that's okay. For the sake of this video, if I wasn't doing the video, I'd do a much better job. So we have the eagle selected. Basically, what's, why it doesn't quite look right is the uh, eagle is just slightly uh, white balanced a little bit differently. So what I want to do is I want to come in here with the temperature and I just want to kind of see how I'm warming it up a little bit just to make it fit the scene a little more applicable. So I just take the temperature slider and move it to the right just a little bit. Just helps make it fit in a little better because we have those warm tones in the background and the eagle looked a little cool compared to those warm tones. And um, so that's good. I think I'm done with the masking there. And I think we'll go back to edit and we'll go down to effects and I'll uh, put a vignette on here like that. And we'll click OK. And there is our composited eagle. Now, um, with this stamp layer on top, unfortunately, you won't be able to go back and do anything to either the eagle that's all by itself on this layer or the background because the stamp layer just overrode all that. And we did our white balance and vignette adjustments on that stamp layer. So if you decide that, well, I really should have blurred that background more or less, you would have to then take this stamp layer, throw it in the garbage and kind of start over at that point, then go down to this um, background layer, blur it a little more or less, and then do a new stamp layer and do everything all over again. So that's how you would uh, do a wildlife composite. Really the key here is you need an image that has uh, the subject of that scene to be fairly um, individualized, meaning it's not like blending into the background, it's sticking out a little bit. That will make your composite go much more uh, easily. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.